All right, welcome everyone. Uh, this is going to be hopefully a relatively quick video in which we'll just talk briefly about a, a maybe a, a bit more of an obscure topic when it comes to the PE file format, and that is uh, forwarded exports. So it was a, a topic or an issue that I came across the other day, and I just wanted to spend a little bit of time putting together some discussion around it in the off chance that it helps. I'm also building a playlist. So if you haven't checked out on the channel, I have a playlist around the PE file. And so adding to that in the hopes of, again, just making that more of a complete resource for many of the more common and maybe even some of the, the more obscure areas around the PE or portable executable file format. So I'm going to talk uh, about exports, forwarded exports today. If you're not familiar with the, the concept of an export, there is already a video on the channel. It'd probably be a great idea to, to check that out before we get any further because I'm going to talk about navigating the file structure as you see here with a hex editor just to give you a, a bit more of an in the weeds look at it. And so if you're not real familiar, I'm, there's going to be some concepts that that previous video is going to cover that'll definitely help out. Uh, now for today's um, for today's demo, uh, we're going to just look at two libraries. Uh, you can see, well, mainly just just one. That's kernel32.dll. Um, I already have that open in the 010 or the 010 hex editor. And the main reason I'm using 010 is because of this template that you see down below. Uh, this template or the results of this template when applied to the file give us a, a parsing of the, the core PE file and all of its primary structures and data. Now, there are going to be plenty of PE parsing utilities. PE Studio, for example, is a great one where if you look at a file and it has a forwarded export, then it'll show you that in a more cleaner or more clear fashion. Uh, what is a forwarded export? Well, a forwarded export is, is kind of as the name implies. It's an exported, uh, it's an export that is simply forwarded to another library. All right, so let's look at the export directory. That's the export dir. And we have the first export, and I'm just picking this because it happens to be the very first one. It makes navigating a little bit of these structures easier, um, and it's and it's also forwarded. So 010 shows you this, and that you have and that you have the acquire SRW lock exclusive off to the side here in the comment column. You can see that that's forwarded because we are looking at this as an export in kernel 32, but in the comment it actually says no, this is a direct forward to RTL acquire SRW lock. Uh, probably exclusive, and that's in the NTDLL library. Now, how is that different than other exports? Well, other exports or non-forwarded exports are going to have an address. And so that way, um, when the exported function is called, there is some code here associated with that in this particular library. Whereas these forwarded ones are saying, nope, don't, there's no code here in kernel 32. All of the code for acquire SRW lock exclusive is actually in another library, in this case, NTDLL. Now, if we walk the structure a little bit, um, you can see that the name, there's, there's three primary arrays that we'd have to trace or that we'd have to follow in order to, to locate the actual function address. Um, address of, of names, address of name ordinals, and address of functions. Um, well, just by clicking on the name, you can see we have the name highlighted here up in our hex editor, acquire SRW lock exclusive. Um, but you'll notice that after it, you have ntdll.rtl.acquire. So we have actual the actual string that represents then the fact that that's a forwarded export. So how do we get there? Well, if we look at the address of name ordinals, uh, what we're doing is um, that's going to provide an array of word values that allow us then an index into the address of name functions. So since our we're looking at the first export, we just need to look at the first value for address of name ordinals. Um, now, that's the value here that you see highlighted up in the hex editor. And you have to remember the NDNness, the actual value we're reading would be 00096110. Now, these are RVAs or relative virtual addresses. So we can't just use that value to navigate the file on disk. Fortunately for us, if you look off to the side here, um, the file offset, FOA, uh, 010 does that conversion for us. So it's it's looking at the actual section that this resides in, and we'll do this in a minute. And again, if, you, if you're not real familiar with this process, uh, I've got a whole other video in this playlist that goes through it. Uh, but we can we can find that first element of that array at, at the address 7D110. So I'll do a control G to do a quick jump. We'll go to that location. Um, and here you can see now we have an array of word values or two byte values. Okay, we only are interested in the first one. 
So this value is 0003. That means that we can take this value from the address of name ordinals and now index into the address of functions. Okay, um, very similarly, we need to get to the base of this array. The RVA for that is 92ED8 that's converted for us. So if we go to 79ED8, that takes us to the beginning of this array on disk in the hex editor. Uh, but now we, we have to go to an index of three. So zero based, we have zero, one, two, and three. And so now our RVA for the actual function pointer for our acquire SRW lock exclusive is 00096E22. So let's get that into the calculator. So 96E22. Um, now, how do we how do we how do we convert that? Well, the quick way or the quick answer is we need to go back up in our hex editor here to the section headers, and we need to find the section that the um, that this particular export table falls in. So likely it's going to be the R data, and the way that you'll know is you look at the address. So 96E22, that's the RVA, uh, and that's and that's going to be closest to this this um this section here uh the dot r data section because this has an offset our virtual address of eighty thousand hex from the image base right uh if we looked at the section before that the dot text not only is dot text typically going to be code but the virtual address is ten thousand hex right and so we're just we're, we're closer with the virtual address from the dot r data section okay so with that in mind what we can do uh let's open up our calculator and we need to subtract the base that that section um, falls under. So 80,000 hex, that gives us just the raw offset in that section. And now because we're parsing on disk, if we add the pointer to raw, the pointer to raw points to this section on disk, 67000, uh, 70E22, that's the actual offset that we can now navigate to uh, in the file here to see the data. So. Again, control G, uh, 7DE22. Just double check that. Yep, got it. And you'll see that we've actually navigated to the beginning of that string, ntdll.rtl acquire SRW lock exclusive. So, so that's sort of the roundabout way in which then the operating system and the loader would know uh, that this is an actual forwarded, um, that this is going to be a forwarded export. Okay, uh, as far as an example program, I just thought it might help to put one together. Here is a very simple program. It really doesn't do anything practical. All I created it to do was to um, call this function and therefore import that functionality. So you can see acquire SRW lock exclusive. If we compile that, take a look at this with PE Studio, you can see from the import section, we have the acquire SRW lock exclusive and it's being imported from kernel 32, which is what we'd expect at this point in time. Now, what we can, what I thought would be a, a good way to look at this just one step further is to look at the actual uh, program as it's being run in memory. We can see that this C60000, that's our base. And if we take a look at, let's look at this program forward at exports. Um, let's see, we need to look at the import table And it looks like this first thunk is going to be at D000. So that's where the beginning of the import table will begin. That actually will line up with, if we look at our section headers, um, the beginning of the R data section. All right, so the virtual address will be D000. So the first four byte value at that location will be our first import, which will be the acquire SRW lock. So that's why I took a look at the image base here because ASLR, we're going to get a random-ish address. And if we just look at the D words at C6D000, you'll see there's our import table. There's the first import. And there's likely a better way to do this, but I've always just done U to disassemble at that location. And you can see, oh, there we are. We are in NTDLL at RTL acquire SRW lock exclusive, right? So that kind of just proves that this was a forwarded export 
and that once the program that imports it, even though it was uh, on the surface from kernel 32, it was imported, then uh, the address actually for the import from that exported library is going to be an NTDLL. Okay, so that's just a, a little bit about forwarded exports. Hopefully that helps. And if anyone has any questions, please feel free. Comments are open.